uh, Dan Ross, who does a great job in the TDN covering California racing, he posted a story uh, last week called Computer Assisted Wagering 101 for California Stakeholders. And it's a really interesting look at the CAW wagerers, which we've touched on before on this show, but not really in depth. And it's if you're not aware of computer assisted wagerers, basically they're these huge wagering groups that have algorithms that they set up that are able to analyze the pool, the pools, the wind pools in particular, but all the pools and spot inefficiencies down to basically like the millisecond before the gates open. And, you know, that leads to a lot of the late odds drops that we see that really frustrate betters. You know, you bet a horse at seven to one and then the horse wins at seven to two. You feel like a loser, even though you cashed the winning ticket. Racing is the only game where that exists. And it's I think it's driving some people away. But it's a really interesting look into their effect. In California, um, particularly because California racing does not does not have the subsidies or the uh, the slot and gaming revenue that other states do. California purses are are basically entirely subsist on handle and wagering. And part of the issue with computer assisted wagering is they're able those those groups and uh, or rather the the places where they, where they wager like a place called the elite turf Cl- club where they house all of the big computer assisted wagers they're able to negotiate host fees with the track and basically get a cut on the takeout and then also the players are able to get rebates from the elite turf club and from the ADWs where they're betting so i mean a lot of times you don't even really have to win you don't even have to show a profit on the wagering side to make money as a computer assisted wagerer because of all the breaks that you're getting in takeout and host fees. And I think that there's an issue too, where it's pretty, it's, it's pretty incestuous because, you know, the elite turf club is majority owned by the Stronic group, which also owns Santa Anita and Golden, Golden Gate in California. Naira also owns a portion of the elite turf club. There's other CAW platforms, including racing and gaming services and velocity, which are owned by Churchill Downs. And it just, I don't know, it adds to this feeling for me as like a regular horse player that it's like the people that are taking my bets and in a lot of cases allowing these wagerers to come in later than I am able to or I have access to, they're this, they're, they, they have those wagerers in their house or in their ADWs that that they partially or majority own. Like it just, it makes it feel like you're so up against it as a regular wagerer that I don't know. I, I, maybe it wouldn't be better, but I would feel a little bit better if the people that were taking my bets did not also own part of the companies that are housing all of these huge wagerers that are crushing my prices at the last second. That just, that, that feels off to me. John, what do you think? Well, again, Joe, you're 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 more savvy on on that front than than I am. Um, but the bottom line is that that we have to have a way to encourage more gamblers to want to bet on our product. And the higher takeout and the situation like this, uh, you know, with with the computer groups, is is not helping. And and it's not only you know it's not only being noticed by the average better, um, but there's so many other options now for wagering. That they don't people don't need if they want to bet they don't need horse racing anymore uh so we we can't be under the same model that we've been in in the past uh especially in in places like california and new york and florida where uh literally there are dozens of other options whether it be casinos or online gaming um or anything you know in between sports betting, sports betting exactly so you know the, the 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 day and age of of us being a standalone um, option and dominating that field is is way in our rearview mirror. I don't know what the answer is. Um, greater minds than mine would be able to have to figure that out. But I think Joe, the you know the other option is we need to have more investment, uh, more uh, play options, more betting options. Whether it's I'm going to bet on Echo Zulu in the in the fifth and the Celtics to to have score more than 120 points parlays. Things like that, because um, my understanding again, I'm a novice at that. But my understanding is that these parlay bets um, are basically the sucker bets that 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 people lose all the time. They think, oh, okay, I can pick two things in a row, and and they lose, and uh, and, and and that's where the casinos make the majority of money. So I don't know if that's a direction that we need to go in. Um, did, does that happen in other sports also, Joe? Where where these large wagering groups are able to come in at the literally the last millisecond? No, no. Okay. And like, I mean, I mean, part of the part of the, the, the difference, too, is that the liquidity liquidity is so much 
greater in a lot in the sports pools mm-hmm. pools like the amount of money it would take to move the Super Bowl line right. is a lot greater than the amount of money it takes to move a uh, interest in the wind pool at Aqueduct on a Thursday. Right. So that's that's the issue too is that there's not enough people other people betting and that's that's the other you know turn that this conversation can take is that there reaches a certain point where the CAW wagers are enough of the pools that they cannibalize each other and they lose the edge. Right. So if you chased away the regular betters that are sick of getting screwed by the guys with the algorithms that have access to the pool data later than you do, then it becomes just the CAW wagers. They're going to go away because they're going to lose their edge if they're just basically playing against each other and not against the minnows like me. Right. So then, then where are you left? And Pat Cummings has warned about this a bunch, you know, how, about how the the handle numbers look on, on the surface okay, like mm-hmm. this handle is pretty steady in right. America, but the percentage of CAW money in those numbers is increasing, mm-hmm. and the percentage of, of regular meat and potatoes horse players is decreasing. That reaches a tipping point, I think, at some juncture where you just don't have enough customers to sustain the product, and to me, that's the nightmare scenario here. And I just, you know, like I said, when, when Naira and the Stronic group and these, these other companies own the racetracks and own the ADWs that the regular players are betting in and own these offshore betting parlors where the big, the big whales are betting, it just is, they, there's no incentive to me for them really to scale back or to restrict the CAW wagers. Right. I mean, Naira has done it in certain pools, which I appreciate, but you know, when they're when they're getting a percentage of all of those bets, like what, you know, they, they have no incentive to defend and protect the smaller horse player. That's a problem. 